Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do now is spend a little time uh, talking about uh, specific um, genetic conditions uh, that are mentioned uh, in the text. Now, there are certain genetic conditions uh, with which you will need to have uh, some familiarity in order to uh, answer questions. So we're just going to go over uh, some of the basics related to uh, these specific conditions. Uh, first, we'll talk about uh, cystic fibrosis. I'll abbreviate that uh, CF. Now, uh, this particular condition uh, is a result of, uh, in most cases, a single gene uh, being uh, defective. Um, now, this gene uh, codes for uh, a particular ion channel that helps with uh, the passage of uh, chlorine ions, or chloride ions, I should say. Uh, so, um, if this gene is non-functioning, what will end up happening is it will cause uh, a buildup of mucus. Sorry, I'm having trouble with Moby here. Um, outside of cells. Now, when that occurs, uh, what it will do is cause a, a host of uh, symptoms associated with the disease. Uh, there can be issues with absorption um, of nutrients. So uh, the mucus lining the intestines prevents the absorption of nutrients uh, after food is concerned uh, or consumed. Also, uh, there are high rates of respiratory illness. Um, the mucus that lines the um, line lines the lungs is viscous, and because of that, um, because of the viscosity of the mucus, uh, they're not able to expel uh, sort of bacteria-laden uh, mucus uh, lining the lungs, and it creates high rates of uh, infection. Uh, ultimately, um, it will lead to uh, early death. Uh, although with uh, medical treatments or advances in medical treatment that have occurred. Uh, people are living into their 30s, 40s, sometimes 50s, depending on the particular type of uh, cystic fibrosis they have. Uh, so again, it's a, a recessive condition. Oh, I should mention that, huh? Um, it's a recessive condition that results in a non-functioning uh, protein or ion channel. Uh, the second condition that we'll look at Uh, is sickle cell disease. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having so much trouble here. Okay, phew. Now, what happens, and this is remarkable, a single amino acid gets substituted in the sickle cell gene. And as a result of that, um, when uh, oxygen concentrations are relatively low, it causes uh, a sickling of the red blood cells. Now, red blood cells uh, typically have sort of concave disc shape. They're sort of like uh, donuts. But uh, with the sickling of the cell, uh, you get this um, shape that uh, causes a decrease in the ability of the red blood cells to uh, carry and deliver oxygen. So a result of that is the red blood cells uh, tend to clump together uh, when uh, blood vessels narrow. Now, uh, this um, clumping of the blood vessels can lead to uh, certainly pain and discomfort, uh, potentially swelling, uh, and uh, ultimately a uh, decrease in the oxygen uh, delivery to tissues of the body. So sickle cell disease, or sickle cell anemia, as it's often called, uh, is not uh, necessarily a good thing to have. Now what's fascinating about this is that um, 
there are differences in phenotype be in between individuals who are uh, homozygous uh, dominant for the trait. Sorry, I'm doing all this right after school here. So there are lots of announcements. Individuals that are homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Now it's individuals who are homozygous recessive who have full-blown sickle cell anemia. And they have the uh, traits associated with the condition. Now individuals who are heterozygous um, are said to have sickle cell trait. And sickle cell trait is fascinating uh, because um, the side effects or the uh, symptoms are milder, uh, but um, you have uh, this uh, partial effect from being heterozygous that actually conveys or confers uh, on individuals uh, a benefit, and we'll talk about that uh, in, in just a moment. Now, individuals who are homozygous dominant are uh, unaffected, and they have the you know standard uh, concave disc or you know donut-shaped red blood cells. Now, in parts of the world where malaria is pre prevalent, prevalent, I'm sorry, uh, where mosquito populations are quite high, particularly uh, equatorial regions around the world. Uh, malaria is uh, a huge issue because uh, mosquitoes carry this malarial parasite that spends part of its life cycle in red blood cells. So uh, individuals who have uh, red blood cells that are unaffected, they have two dominant alleles, uh, are struck with or stricken with um, malaria at relatively high rates. So individuals who are homozygous dominant have relatively high rates of malaria. Now, um, individuals with two recessive alleles obviously have uh, the troubles uh, related to sickle cell anemia, but individuals who are heterozygous have relatively mild symptoms uh, related to uh, sickle cell disease, but they are also resistant to the malarial parasite. So they're resistant to malaria. So evolutionarily, Individuals who are heterozygous uh, are favored for uh, the fact that they can uh, not have symptoms of sickle cell disease that are too severe and have the ability to uh, resist malaria. So that helps explain why uh, sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease is uh, quite prevalent in uh, the African American community in the United States uh, because people who have um, ancestry in equatorial regions around the world uh, are more likely to be heterozygous for this trait because of the fact that uh, nature tends to select individuals who are heterozygous. So fascinating stuff. Uh, finally, we're going to look at um, autosomal dominant conditions. So, oops. Sorry, Moby's getting tired here. Autosomal dominant conditions, uh, there are two f with which you need to be familiar. Achondroplasia, which is a particular form of dwarfism. And Huntington's disease. Now, since these are uh, dominant conditions, um, the individual only needs to inherit one dominant allele in order to have uh, the dominant trait. Um, Huntington's disease, by the way, is a neurodegenerative disorder. Which means that uh, in middle age, late 30s, uh, early 40s, potentially even the 50s, um, they start to have uh, plaques that build up and a breakdown in their central nervous system. Uh, leads to progressive loss of muscle control and uh, eventually death. So um, this is uh, really quite sad because uh, only one dominant allele is enough to cause disease in offspring, but because um, expression of the condition isn't until later in life, people with Huntington's disease have, have a often 
uh, already uh, had children. So if a person uh, is discovered to have had Huntington disease, then you know the odds of their offspring having the condition as well uh, are 50%. Uh, let's see, last thing I want to mention is that in reality, many uh, traits are multifactorial. That simply means that uh, the resulting phenotype uh, is due to both genetic uh, and environmental influences. So, you know, you live life at the confluence of uh, the genes you've been given uh, and the uh, environmental uh, impact uh, that can influence those genes. So you're sort of the sum total of the genetic information that comprises you and uh, your life experiences. Genes sort of set the parameters, they set the endpoints, and then, you know, your environmental experience or your life experiences, you know, lead you in a particular direction in terms of expression of those genes.